in the previous lecture video we have solved a numerical problem on dynamic force analysis of horizontal reciprocating engine by using graphical method in this video we are going to solve the same numerical problem by analytical method of course we are going to consider inertia effect due to both piston and connecting rod in this study are you ready so let's get started hi everyone welcome to my channel i am dr v jayakumar i am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering graduates if this is your first time and not yet subscribed please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that to get notified all my forthcoming videos quickly let me present the overview of engine force analysis this can be studied under two broad topics one is static force analysis which were presented in my lectures 2 to 4 then dynamic force analysis which can be studied under two broad categories in the first category we have ignored weight of the connecting rod and considered only weight of the reciprocating parts those studies were presented in our lecture videos 5 to 8 but we need to consider weight of the connecting rod as well so considering the weight of the connecting rod as well as the weight of the reciprocating parts the dynamic force analysis problems are solved they are solved by graphical method which were presented in our lecture number 12 in this video we will be solving the same numerical problem but by analytical method are you clear about the drones view of the entire engine force analysis yes good as you are aware these concepts are interdependent concepts let me present you very quick recap on all the prerequisite concepts required before solving the problem to start with these are the various notations that we are going to solve while solving this problem also okay And please understand these are the various forces acting on ic engine but in this study we have considered everything except the weight of the connecting rod so all the formula derived are still applicable but the only point is weight of the connecting rod and its inertia force are not included in this derivation as you are aware the most important component for us is the turning moment or torque acting on the crankshaft how can i find this is the formula which we have obtained in our lecture number 6 this torque exerted on the crankshaft is contributed by mass of the reciprocating parts and its associated inertia force right and also the gas pressure net load acting on the piston is also taken into account while solving this problem we need uh, two formula here one is acceleration of the piston which i am going to use and also we are going to consider acceleration of the connecting rod as well these two formula we are going to use in this problem okay now since mass of the connecting rod is involved we are going to replace the connecting rod mass by two masses by using dynamically equivalent system condition or this problem also requires the concept of correction couple uh, this formula and the direction these concepts will be applied while solving this problem okay shall we see now the analytical method procedure and associated concepts so in this study we are going to consider mass of the reciprocating parts and mass of the connecting rod first let us replace distributed connecting rod mass by theoretically equivalent two masses m1 and m2 by using the conditions of dynamically equivalent system okay m1 is assumed to be acting at the gudjon pin which is nothing but your point p whereas mass m2 is assumed to be acting 
at the crank pin, which is nothing but at point C. Is that clear now? So now what is the total mass acting at the piston pin end? Already we have reciprocating mass MR. Additionally, we have portion of the connecting rod mass, which is nothing but M1. So MR plus M1. What is the mass acting at the crank pin? M2. So my next step becomes to find M1 and M2. We know the first condition of dynamic equilibrium. What is that? Mass of the connecting rod must be equal to sum of these two masses. So this is the condition number one. The condition number two says the center of gravity of the connecting rod and its equivalent system should remain the same. That means G must remain the same. So how can I check now? Let us find moment about G due to those two masses that must be equal. So M1 into L1 must be equal to M2 into what is the distance? Uh, L minus L1. So this is the condition number two. On simplifications of equation one and two, I can get your equation to find mass M1 and M2. Okay. Now we'll go to step number one. What is our aim? Our aim is to find resultant torque exerted on the crankshaft. There are many forces that are contributing to that resultant torque. So first, let us see torque exerted on the crankshaft due to gas pressure and inertia force of the reciprocating parts. How can we find? Already we derived the equation in our previous lecture. What is the formula? This is the formula. Here, how to find FP? We have to find FL minus FI minus FF. Am I right? So here, how to find Fi? Fi is equal to M into A. Am I right? Here, what is the mass? Reciprocating parts mass plus portion of the connecting rod mass that is placed at point P, which is nothing but M1. Right? So this is the M. What is the acceleration of the piston formula? So this is my acceleration. First, find Fi, substitute Fi in Fp formula. Once if you know Fp, substitute there, you will get this torque. I call that torque as T1. Okay? If gas pressure is not given, you consider inertia of the reciprocating parts alone by using the given formula. Is that clear? Yes. Let us go to step two. Since we have portion of the connecting rod mass M2, which is acting at the crank pin C, that M2 acting at crank pin C will contribute to the crankshaft torque, which needs to be calculated additionally. I call torque due to weight of the connecting rod M2 at C as T2. How can I find T2? T2 equal to M2G, this is the weight, multiplied by distance. What is the distance? R cos theta. Right. By using this formula, we can find torque T2. What is the direction? It acts counterclockwise direction. Force multiplied by perpendicular distance. It creates counterclockwise direction. Okay. You know that. Technically speaking, we should have placed mass M1 at the smaller end and M2 at this end. But for our convenience, we have moved M2 from here to the crank pin end. This resulted into some error. So something needs to be compensated to do that. That compensation is nothing but correction couple. So theoretically, there is a correction couple that is acting on the connecting rod. We know that correction couple is equal to right. The magnitude of correction couple can be determined using this equation. M into K1 square minus K square multiplied by angular acceleration of the connecting rod. We know the formula for 
angular acceleration of the connecting rod which is nothing but minus omega square sin theta divided by n substituting that we will be getting formula to determine magnitude of the correction couple am i right so here k1 square is equal to l1 into l3 then k is radius of gyration of the connecting rod normally will be given in our problem okay by using this formula we can determine the magnitude right we have determined the correction couple but what is important is this correction couple will contribute to crankshaft torque how can we determine that i am going to apply some logic here do you remember the concept that we have studied in your engineering mechanics a couple can be represented by two equal and opposite forces which are some distance apart so in this case f into d will be equal to c the same logic i am going to apply here what i am going to do already i know now correction couple value this correction couple value i want to replace by two forces one force acting here which i call it as fy another force acting upward which i call it as fy these two equal parallel forces acting in the opposite direction forms the couple that couple value must be equal to correction torque value okay how can i find that uh, force this is the distance between these two uh, forces what is the distance how can i find this is phi this is l what is the formula l cos phi is the distance now what can i do i know the tc value which is equal to fy multiplied by this distance so from this i can find fy value please understand at point p this fy will be cancelled out by the normal reaction fn acting on the cylinder walls so this fn force will be nullified by fn so that means i will be having fy only how can i find torque due to fy fy multiplied by the perpendicular distance which is nothing but no am i right no is nothing but r cos theta i can substitute this fy here i will be getting this formula by using this equation we can find t3 value okay so summing them we should be getting the resultant torque exerted on the crankshaft is it clear this is the concept involved okay yes what are the concepts that we have discussed so far for horizontal reciprocating engine is very much valid for the vertical reciprocating engine as well of course we have to do little bit changes here and there for torque one the formula do not change so while calculating the piston effort in addition to the weight of the reciprocating parts we need to add additionally portion of the weight of the connecting rod m1g which is assumed to be acting at p if you add this the same formula is very much applicable okay yes what is t2 torque due to weight of the connecting rod m2 into g is the weight of the connecting rod which is acting at c multiplied by the distance r sin theta in case of horizontal engine we got r cos theta but here we are getting r sin theta this is the one small change while calculating the t2 can you follow that yes while calculating the torque due to correction couple there is no change in the formula so same formula as that of horizontal reciprocating engine uh, once we know t1 t2 t3 values 
we have to do algebraic sum of them to get the answer. That's it. There you are. Are you ready to solve your numerical problem now? I am taking exactly the same problem that we have solved in my previous video by graphical method. Yes, let us read the problem carefully. There itself, you will write the given data. The connecting rod of a horizontal reciprocating engine, immediately you underline, it is not a vertical reciprocating, it is a horizontal reciprocating engine, underline immediately. Then the connecting rod length is given, L is equal to 400 mm is given. Stroke, 200 mm. So from this, I could write crank radius is equal to stroke by 2. So I can say R is equal to 100 mm. Mass of the reciprocating parts, which we call it as M suffix R. Then mass of the connecting rod, which we call it as M suffix C. Radius of gyration of the connecting rod about an axis passing through the center of gravity is given. So obviously, this value is k value. The distance of the center of gravity of the connecting rod from the big end center, big end center I call C, center of gravity as G. Therefore, what they have given is the value GC. The engine runs at 750 RPM. So N value is given. So what we need to find is to find torque exerted on the crankshaft. So they need torque value T when the crankers turned 30 degree. We have already solved this problem by graphical method. Shall we solve the same problem by analytical method? Yes. These are the given data which have already listed out. To start with, uh, we can find omega value. Omega equal to 2 pi n by 60, RPM is given, so very well we could find omega value. We can find one more data also, which is nothing but L by R. L is 400 mm, I suppose, divided by R, 100 mm. Therefore, n equal to 4. Right. As discussed, we are going to apply five steps procedure to attack this problem. These are those five steps. Right. Yes, this is the zeroth step wherein we are going to replace mass of the connecting rod by two point masses M1 and M2. These are the expressions that we have already obtained during your uh, concept discussion. Let me apply directly. So in this case, what is L? 400 mm, 0.4 meter given. If I know L, if I know GC, I can find L1. L minus GC. L is 400 minus GC, it is given in our problem, 160 mm, by that we will be getting 240 mm. What is MC? It is given as 100 kg. So mere substitution in the formula, we must be getting M1 and M2 values, 40 kg and 60 kg. So step number one, we need to determine torque due to gas pressure and inertia force of the reciprocating parts. So by using the expression given, torque 1 equal to piston effort multiplied by sin theta plus sin 2 theta divided 2 into n square minus sin square theta into R. But here, load acting on the piston, which is nothing but due to gas pressure, minus inertia force. This is the formula. But in this problem, they have not given gas pressure. So we need to consider only inertia force. Am I right? How can I find inertia force? Inertia force is equal to mass of the reciprocating parts multiplied by acceleration of the reciprocating parts. Substituting the value here, you will be getting the inertia force. Right, we have got the inertia force. What I want? 
I want to find T1. So by substituting in this formula, I should get Right, on simplification, we get the T1 value as 6143.92 Newton meter. My dear students, this is a vector, so we need two answers magnitude and direction. What is the direction? What is the inertia force direction? Inertia force will be acting here. Because of the inertia force, this FT will be acting. No, towards this direction. This will be the direction of FT. Therefore, about O, this will create counterclockwise direction. We have got now magnitude and direction of T1. Okay. Now we are going to find T2 value, which is nothing but torque due to portion of the connecting rod weight M2, which is acting at point C. How can we find? So this is the expression we have obtained. So we are going to substitute the values there, okay? So we have got 50.97 Newton meter as the magnitude of T2. Can you guess what will be the direction? Find moment about O, M2G multiplied by perpendicular distance. So this will create again counterclockwise moment now we have got magnitude and the direction of t2 okay we are going to find t3 value which is nothing but torque due to correction couple we have already derived those expressions using them we can determine it right using the first formula we can find value of the correction couple the next formula we can find torque due to correction couple here I know M, I know K, Omega all, only K1 square not known. How can I find K1 square? We know that K1 square is equal to L1 into L3, L400, L1 240, L3 160 mm. It's all given, okay? So using that, I can find Right, I can substitute now here. Yeah. Now we can find T3 easily. On simplification, we must be getting the answer. There is a minus symbol here. Now let us come to the direction. We know that the direction of correction couple will be in the direction of decreasing value of phi. If you know alpha direction, it will be the same. If you don't know the alpha direction, the direction in which phi will be decreasing, that direction is the one in which correction couple will be acting. That is a clue. Okay. If correction couple direction is clockwise, torque due to correction couple also will be acting clockwise. Fine. So we have obtained the direction and magnitude of torque T3 as well. We have come to the final step. We are going to find the resultant torque exerted on the crankshaft. We know that the resultant torque is the algebraic sum of torque 1, 2, and 3. As we have seen, Torque 1 and 2 are acting in the counterclockwise direction, whereas torque 3 is acting in the clockwise direction. So assuming counterclockwise direction as positive, I could write T1 plus T2, then T3 is negative because it is acting in clockwise direction. Is that clear? So now let me substitute all the obtained values in the previous steps. We must be getting the answer. By simplification, we are getting the value of resultant torque as 6595.55 Newton meter. 
we must be giving the direction. What should be the direction? Since we have assumed a counterclockwise positive, we have got your positive value. Therefore, direction of T will be counterclockwise. So we have got the magnitude and direction of the resultant top. That's it. We have completed the numerical problem. Okay. Right. Shall we compare the results that we have obtained by analytical method with the of the graphical method? Do you remember we have solved the same numerical problem by graphical method which was presented in our previous lecture? Yes, this is the answer that we have obtained for the same problem by graphical method. We have got the answer as 6652.37 6, Newton meter. What is that answer we have obtained now? As you could see that there is a difference in the values that we have obtained from graphical and analytical methods. Can you guess the reason? Yes, graphical method, we have used Klein's construction. So there will be some human practical error involved. Also, in the analytical method, in some derivations, we have done some approximate expressions. For example, alpha C, we have used approximated expressions. So due to these reasons, there would be small deviations in the numerical values. Is that clear now? Yes. So you can practice this problem at your home and check your answer. So try this problem by analytical method. Okay. I hope this video helps you in understanding this difficult but interesting topic. If so, like this video, share it to your friends and subscribe the channel. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let me see you with some other interesting topics. Take care. Bye.